I won. Won what? I won. Oh, in my junk mail, I got an email from CVS Pharmacy saying that, that I won a $90 pharmacy gift card. And all I have to do is click the link that says confirm here. Isn't that awesome? I think I'll click on it. Not idiots. Screw you, you freaking losers who try to rip people off and put viruses on their computers. And that's the gift that keeps on giving, Rick. Just like your mom. Just Hey, welcome back to our stupid Rex. Support. I'm Rick. You can follow me on Instagram. Go to Marlo. Please count the links to pay for all of the content. Can I like put? Yeah, come here. Oh yeah, yeah, right there. Uh, today we have a uh, film companion interview. This is Great. from Nasir Din Shah. Oh baby. Uh, ah. And uh, that's all I know. He spills the tea. Oh, awesome. How long is this bad boy? Eighteen men. Oh, spectacular. Bring it on. Uh, and and that I oh. saw in the title the the title like the little thumbnail. It said. Like a quote from him, and said, "I'm finally tiring of cinema." <laughs> it's what, interesting. It's what. So I'm guessing he says that at some point. That'd be interesting to. I mean, he's old. He's been around for a long time. It's changed. He's a lot. done a lot, and I wonder. And maybe he's more theater. You like theater? We know oh, he likes theater. Yeah. Well, I've had a, a, a very recent realization for myself, which is what birthed me doing Barbarian again and teaching acting classes. So I'm, I am excited to hear this thespian talk. Man. Here we go. After 50, almost 50 years of acting in cinema, I think I'm finally tiring of it. Stars like to make this statement, you know, uh, I've arrived. So it'll be like the Shanshah arriving, you know. Hey, Hoshiyar, ba, ba, <laughs> okay, what does that mean, I've arrived? And then, bam, the door will open and the star will enter. <laughs> it's like fate has dealt a blow on part two of Planet Zodiac. <laughs> They're all gone. Never forget our first, if you'd never seen our introduction to this man, watch our interview of Deborah, which is review. the, Zin, yeah, the review, there's Zindagi so welcome to Delbra. Thank you. This is my Hello. first time interviewing you, so I'm going to do my best to not be intimidated. <laughs> but I want to ask you what you do as an actor to ensure that when you're working with newcomers, you don't allow them to just caught, get caught up with the aura that mm. you command because I'm a good pretty question. sure no good can come with being starstruck on set. Absolutely. Uh, I don't get uh, pleased when newcomers say we are so nervous and all that sort of thing. And I tell them, look, this is not a boxing match <laughs> that we are involved in. It's a, <laughs> this is not a contest. Yeah. So there's nothing to be nervous about. And I, uh, I'm one of those actors who's never felt nervous about acting. Um, From the start. Uh, call, it, uh, call it vanity or call it whatever you like. But the fact is this. Never ever have I felt any nervousness while acting. Except when I have to do a romantic song. <laughs> <laughs> Not just nervous. That's understandable. I to do, and I've always found it impossible to do. But um, <laughs> I've worked with great actors like Dilip Kumar Sahab, hmm. uh, Kamal Hassan, hmm. uh, and others. Why isn't Kamal Hassan um, a sob? But I've never felt intimidated I don't know the, by them. I don't know either. Also because they were, they both these gentlemen, they're thorough uh, it's because professionals. because he's dead? And uh, they know what they want to do and I know what I want to do. So it's like two musicians doing a, a you know, a, a jugal bandhi together. So I try to, I, I don't make uh, friends easily and I'm not very good with the uh, you know, breaking the ice between people. But when I'm, when I meet a younger actor on the set who I can see is terrified mm -hmm. of the prospect, not only of me, of the camera, sure. of the results, etc. Sure. I try to put him at his ease by having a little chat. Uh, you know, putting an arm around his shoulder, reassuring him. I don't know whether I succeed or not, but I do. Uh, uh, I do try. Yeah. <laughs> And, well, you are succeeding clearly because Z5 has reported some pretty staggering numbers on season one of Taj. Yes. How much of that feedback were you able to sort of assimilate and bring? Oh, he looks great in that role. I, like a royal. Well, I'm happy that the, the, the series is doing well, naturally. But I once I've done the job, I'm through with it. 
I don't anticipate anything. I put it on my memory shelf. I don't press erase <laughs> button on them all. <laughs> Some of them I like. <laughs> <laughs> Depends. So, uh, it's, 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 it's really of not much consequence to me <laughs> because I'm accustomed to all the ups and downs that can happen to an actor. Uh, and I've never had any anticipations of, uh, of any kind from any work I do for me. Doing the work to the best of my ability is of prime importance. And I think I was taught this lesson very early in my career because my first film, Nishant, made in 1975, starred Girish Karnad, Shaban Azmi, Smita Patil, Amrish Puri, oh, wow. Ashan Karbanda, uh, and as well. And after Nishant was released, every one of them got work. <laughs> <laughs> Except you. <laughs> For some reason. Uh, I, I later figured out that that reason was in fact a backhanded compliment because people didn't think I was an actor. They thought I was some local that Shyam had picked up from Hyderabad. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Which is a huge compliment. That is a actually. compliment. Yeah. But the fact that I never got work, uh, it confused me and it made me, uh, gave me this lesson which I've never forgotten that do your job and forget about it. Mm -hmm. You know? You got to do that as an actor, especially up and coming. You've been doing this work for 55 years now. That's yeah. more than half your life. Damn. 240 <laughs> credits. He's been I acting did. longer than I've been so alive. Bad, yeah. What excites you about yep. this current phase of your career? Um, that I'm still getting uh, interesting parts. In fact, after the age of 50, I, I, I started getting more interesting parts than I got as a young man. Uh, Not a surprise. As a young man is when I, uh, you know, my reputation got established and with all those art movies and everything. Mm -hmm. But uh, really challenging parts I've received in the second phase of my career, in fact, or the third phase, whatever you like to call it. Uh, the work of, the job of participating in a project which I'm going to enjoy is what drives me. If I feel I'm going to have fun mm -hmm. doing this, I do it. Uh, one can have fun for any any one of a million reasons, you know. <laughs> it could be <laughs> could be the role, it could be the director you want to work with, it could be a month of shooting in Switzerland. <laughs> <laughs> it could be a ton of money. But then you have to do the number uh, with the girl. It could be anything. But these days I prefer to play cameos uh, because I'm kind of tired <laughs> uh, after 50, almost 50 years of acting in cinema. I think I'm finally tiring of it. Uh, I'm still enjoying the stage very much. What a shock. I hate that you say that. <laughs> it's the it's the waiting that is, you know, brain damage. Yeah, that's most and of acting. <clears throat> the fact that, that you're all ready to go yep. in a shot. You could be waiting around hours. You know, all systems are go. And as you're about to go into it, oh, cut, 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 cut. Yeah, and you say, yeah. I wish this didn't happen. This is the nature of the beast. Yep. I don't complain about it. I've lived with it all this time. But I am getting a little tired of it. Yeah. I'd rather be on the stage where live contact is possible between you and the viewers. Yeah. In fact, I just spoke to your wife very recently where she talked to me about what she fears is this threat of delusion with just the enormous entourages that actors have mm -hmm. today. You <laughs> yeah. walked in, I don't see anyone adjusting your collar or sort of pandering to you. Hey, someone come and adjust <laughs> Is it something you... Because he's not a movie star. Stay away from? No, I, I don't see the need to have these uh, people hanging around me. I never have. Uh, Shavana, early in my career, would advise me to get a public relations man. And I said, why? I don't need a public relations guy. <laughs> I can handle my public relations. I'm not terribly interested in it in any case. And uh, I didn't have a personal makeup man uh, for many years. And until, until it became, you know, that I was doing several movies at the same time, all movies that I'd, I'd rather forget, but sometimes two shifts a day, kind of thing, traveling from Alibag to Mud Island and back, you know, that kind of stuff. So I realized that I can't be having a, a different makeup man each time. Hmm. 
So I, I zeroed in on this one person called Jairaj, who was an assistant to one of the makeup men, unit makeup men, and he's been with me since. He's even my manager now. Yeah. Oh wow! He runs the <clears throat> company, and, uh, and and he's the only one I need. Uh, and I need somebody to get me a glass of water now and then, or I can get it myself. I don't see the need. I think stars like to make this statement, you know, uh, I've arrived. So it'll be like the Shanshah arriving, you know, hey, Hoshiyar, Baadab, ba, ba, Babulai Zahab, and then, dum, the door will open and the star will open. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think of myself as a star. Exactly. And I, I find a lot of the, the behavior of stars rather, uh, you know, immature. Yeah. <laughs> but you've actually placed a lot of hope in a lot of young talent as well. Yes. Is there like a word of caution you'd want to give them to just perhaps not lose track? Love the craft. To, uh, not to lose contact with life. Yeah. You know, that's what happens. Mm. See, the, the reason a person like Nawazuddin or uh, Pankaj Tripathi <sighs> Or the late uh. was so good, are so good, Nawaz and Pankaj Tripathi, or a guy like uh, Tulshan Devaya, or a guy like Gajaraj Rao, mm. or KK Menon, uh. Manoj Bajpai, uh. marvelous actors. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, but they were no shocked that those are the people that he. Relative obscurity and middle class or lower middle class. Homes mm -hmm. into uh, uh, and so they're still grateful. Cases right? like Nawaz and so on, the transition has been gradual. But it's terrifying to think of somebody who overnight becomes a star. Mm -hmm. So, what I'd caution them, if I may, is not to lose touch. The reason that these guys are so good is because they had real life to draw upon. Exactly. The more you become famous, the richer you become, the more isolated you become. And you lose touch with touch that. with reality. Yes, yep. Absolutely. Yep. absolutely. I suppose that's the requirement of a star in India. You and the requirement of an actor is to be in touch with life. Yeah, you know, there are gray-haired guys who will dye their hair and then put whitener on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I find it a bit odd to ask, but honestly, I'm curious to know: Is there an emotion that you still struggle to play on screen? <laughs> Romantic songs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, uh, see, sometimes, so sometimes the emotion can hit so close to home, mm -hmm. to the bone, rather, that it's discomforting. But then, I don't, uh, uh, I don't take it personally. I don't try and become the character and feel everything he feels. It's good enough for me to represent what he feels. Uh, there was a time when I believed in method. trying trying to do the method and the method still has a lot of useful things to offer but this nonsense of becoming the character uh, I, I've always found ludicrous because you can't and you shouldn't. If I decide to become the character I played in <laughs> in uh, Goodbye Again <laughs> or whatever it was called <laughs> Welcome Back <laughs> And, what uh, is that? Then that means that I have to go blind. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye no, again, uh, I guess, right? I don't think it's an actor's job to suffer with the character. Mm. You have to... It's it's because Daniel Dillow is the either. goat. <laughs> and so everybody and, thinks that you and, have to and, do that. And, if you look at it that and, way... And he, Brando. Yeah, Brando. But yeah, we'll talk about that. And when you're, you're needing your sanity. But you took a while to get here because you said that you were pretty hard on the sets of Jani Bido Yaro. Not, yes. not nice to work around. Not nice Pranansha. to work at all. I was, I mean, I would have, uh, myself, I would have probably done something drastic <laughs> to such an actor. <laughs> it was that was the time when I believed deeply in the method and believability and logic and uh, all that. And Kundan was out to make a Marx Brothers kind of movie. Mm. <laughs> I hadn't seen enough of the Marx Brothers then. Yeah. Oh, wow. So I, I found many situations in the film ludicrous. <laughs> and I said, this is not even going to be funny. I, I didn't find anything funny. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. What are we doing? <laughs> that is so funny. That none of us 
we're laughing at ourselves while performing it. You know, if there's some of these that we should uh, watch, please let me know, obviously, in the comments. Ravi Baswani. Wow, that looks interesting. It's, it's like fate has dealt a blow on part two of Janet Gurya. They're all gone. Kundan. Yeah, so I, I gave Kundan a lot of grief. But I did apologize to him later when I saw the film. Okay. And, and I realized that I was mistaken and I was uh, being unreasonable. I should have tried to get onto his wavelength hmm. instead of trying to get the film on my. Are you more um, uh, trusting of your directors now? I, I was always trusting. I depend on my directors greatly. And I, I felt that Kundan was going wrong. I was mistaken. I felt it was going wrong. Uh, I don't know why I felt that. I think it's because, you know, after movies like Albert Pinto and Mantham and, you know, Junoon and so on, I, I was too much into this thing of uh, logic and emoting all the time. An actor's only job is not to emote. It is to communicate. And Jani Bido Yaro was a movie that wanted to get across a certain idea. Mm. It was not a comedy for the sake of making people laugh. It made people laugh, but it also disturbed them. Mm -hmm. Right? And maybe that's why it wasn't a big success when it was released in the theatres. But over the years, it's become a Found legend. An audience. Yeah, absolutely. It's, become, it's become a cult. Absolutely. And people see it now and they realize that this guy who made this movie was very far-sighted. Yeah. To think of, you know, the, try to make a sequel to it. And Kundan did try impossible because the corruption that it's talking about has now reached such humongous proportions that it would, make, it would be a very expensive film to make and secondly he would be able to get all those actors together <laughs> ever again yeah, yeah you also play a really uh, terrible dad in Taj and you know someone really screws up his kids on in the real life front um, how would you rate yourself as a father <laughs> <laughs> I, I would rate myself as a father who tried his best. And Aren't didn't, we all? didn't always succeed, yeah. See, I was very conscious that my children should be friends with me. Okay. But, and uh, uh, and they do try very hard not to take me seriously. <laughs> um, and I try the same. I, I would love them to, you know, sit and chat with me. But I don't know, they're a little bit, uh, I don't know what the word is uncomfortable. I think it's because of this reputation of mine. And, but, um, but, but, I, I know I would, I would open my veins for them if they needed it, you know. Uh, I would like them to be a little less anxious when they're around. You spoke uh -huh. of the reputation. Is there a price that comes with being outspoken in today's world? Not that I've had to pay. Yeah, you get hate messages and so on. I don't check pay them? any attention to them. Yeah, all the time. I don't even look at them. They come on Facebook replies and this and that. Sometimes people send me letters. And I can tell by the letter, the look of the letter. Because there'll be no address or sender's name on it. I don't bother about them. Uh, and it's not, a, it's not a question of being outspoken. It's this, it's this reputation of being this great actor, you know, which which is a mm. burden to carry around. Mm. I, I want, I really want to lighten up and I feel that I've been shortchanged because I never got enough chances to do comedy. Your mm. wife talked about how comedy saved her. Yeah, exactly. And that's the last thing she expected. I think I'm not bad at comedy too, but I say who, romantic numbers too. Who makes, yeah, romantic numbers. I think so. Instead of those, <laughs> I wish they were comical numbers. But, uh, we, don't, we also don't make good comedies. I mean, that's a fact. Yeah. Tell me the last good comedy that you saw in this country. You know, you'd probably say Parosan. Well, that's true. Ganam, Gari, all of that was the last one? <laughs> I mean, streets come out. I mean, <laughs> like, you know, I, I love what you said once about how... Delhi Belly made his laugh. Yeah. Actor, but if I think there's been quite a few. People won't remember you. So, if you're talking to Gen Alpha, the ones that are just possibly discovering you now, Leave me with two films that you really hope that, hmm. that they, they pick up of yours. 
I'd like them to see Bar, and I suppose Jaane Bhi Do Yaro. Oh, that's a comedy, yeah. The others, I'm certain they'll see on their own anyway. Masoom is see. We saw that one. We liked that a lot. That was a classic month one. Generations of children. They all sing Lakhvi Ki Kati till today. It was shot 45 years ago. Uh, so I'm not concerned about that. That they're going to see anyway. <laughs> also, my son is still singing it. So what are. a legacy yeah. you've left behind. Yeah. Thank you. I was lucky. I was lucky to be in that film. <laughs> Thank you so much for talking to me. I think I did well not being intimidated. Not so you did. You actually helped me. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> He's very, he's he's very uh, introspective. Very, and it, like all great actors can listen to him all day long. Yeah, um, but yeah, I. It's funny. Uh, it's been in my mindset a lot in recent days because I had a, I had like I alluded to this at the outset. I had a pretty big revelation recently, mm-hmm. and out of that <laughs> revelation came the acting classes I'm <clears throat> teaching and the uh, doing Barbarian again, and the revelation I had. I haven't even shared this with you. Um, it came out of a really an awful day that turned into a good day with Indrani and I. Yeah, sex. I don't, <laughs> I don't remember when. I don't know when or why I started doing this, but it was going on for too long of a time where the focus of my attention was representation, getting an agent, getting a manager, getting the audition, getting a callback, getting a headshot, getting a reel, going to the showcase, doing the one-on-one. And when those things weren't being accomplished, it was very deflating for me because I was looking at the clock and thinking, okay, the year is passing and I'm not doing things. And my goals were, okay, by this point, I want to have gotten a guest star. By this point, I want to have gotten a supporting role. By this point, I want to have done a film. By this point, I want to... Nothing about (coughs) craft. Yeah. Nothing about love of... And I went back and I watched an old teaching series I did that I had created. It's a four hour video series teaching on, on, on acting. And thanks to Indrani reminding me, and you know, she just straight up said to me at one point, why, why, aren't, why aren't you doing a play? Mm-hmm. And I realized I had become way, way too fixated on career instead of craft. And mm-hmm. it, it really brought me back home to my love of the craft and the fact that uh, if you're not careful, that's a word of warning is that if you're, if you're an actor in any industry, you can easily <coughs> lose sight of the fact that you love the art form and become more fixated on becoming a star than just being a good actor. Yeah, and he's made choices. I'm sure he's made choices. You look back and he went, you know what? I was. I was just thinking movie star at that time. But when he uh, said specifically, he's like, "There's a yeah, lot I'd like to forget about. A lot I'd like to forget." And yeah, as far I talk about this in the in the <laughs> acting class a lot. Uh, Daniel Day Lewis the king of method. Yeah. He in no way, shape or form prescribes that for others. Yeah. He has said, I think the reason I have to do that is because I don't think I'm a good enough actor to do it any other way. Which is insane. (laughs) It really is crazy. And I love, you know, Jeremy Strong is also notorious on in succession and Brian Cox hates it. Yeah. (laughs) Brian Cox says, fuck off and says, you know, just remember your lines, remember your lines and don't bump into the furniture. That's Cox's (laughs) process. But I understand for John for Cox. for John for Jeremy, I've heard him talk about his process, and it, it uh, what's his face, right? Yeah, he's Kendall. Yeah, he he doesn't he doesn't have as many actors don't have the exact same process with each role, um, and that's something I would love to talk with him about. I would love to talk with him about process. I would love to talk with him about the differentiation between roles, uh, universal principles he ascribes to versus the times he has fluctuation and times he just throws it out the window. It's, it's super interesting that Kendall subscribes to Method because he's one of the actors that I don't think is as strong until maybe I think it's the fact that he does that, I think he might get in his oh, head I, a little bit. I think he gets he in his might. Head. He might get in his head. I don't think I he's a fine him. actor. I think he's good. And uh, it's not a surprise. But he's nowhere, like he's not like it's an amazing actor. But I think I, it now makes sense. I think he gets in his head. But it's not a surprise that, well, so does Kendall. Yeah, well. Yeah. Kendall's in his head a lot. Yeah. But it's not a surprise. If you look at the resumes of the primary cast members of Succession, there's only one that doesn't have a huge theater background of stage and screen. They're all thespians with Who is it? Is roots. It, uh, it's called. Cult? Yeah. Yeah. Who's my favorite um, character on that? He's list? magnificent. He's beautiful. But there's a funny story about Strong on the last episodes they were filming. So they were filming on a, a soundstage that had obviously <clears throat> adjacent sets and sound stages. 
And this guy on another production saw him come in and he came in and he asked the production assistant where the bathroom was. Mm -hmm. And he went to the bathroom. Production assistant thought nothing of it. A PA from Succession comes into the soundstage. Mm -hmm. Says, was Jeremy just in here? Yeah. Was he asking where a bathroom is? Yeah. <sighs> he's going around everywhere because the scene we're filming today, Kendall's asking for a bathroom and he's going around everywhere asking people <laughs> where a bathroom is. That is how that is how method his approach to Kendall has been. Not stupid. <laughs> That's so stupid. Now you know why Cox is Cox is just Cox loves him. It's just when it comes to their process, it's a completely other other world. Bless his heart. Yeah, you can tell that he gets in his head. That's funny. Um, well, I mean, for, for Kendall, it works, obviously. It Kendall's works. Kendall's always in the bottom. The head, bottom but. line of process, for me, like what I, what I teach, my objective in teaching is to make acting, I say acting isn't easy, but it doesn't have to be hard, that, that, that you can get to some basic foundations. And sadly, there's too many acting teachers who put you on this nonstop journey that never reaches its end because they want you to come back and continue taking classes. Versus if I wanted to teach somebody how to do a triple time step in tap dancing, I have certain steps to teach them and then they execute them and then they're doing a triple time step. I believe the same is, is true with, with, with acting process that you can take all of these things and kind of whittle them down. And, and, and the bottom line, all process has one end in mind. Mm -hmm. Do we believe yeah. you? That's it. Always, if the audience believes you, you've done your job. So whatever means it takes for you to achieve that end, that's yeah. why so many actors have s different process. I've never, I have a hard time with acting classes because the reason I would like an acting class is, and this is not uncommon, is just for to, practice. To, to do the work. Yes, I've absolutely. Never, I've never learned something from somebody in a class that I'm like, aha. Oh, really? No, like I've, I've never like learned something in a class that I was like, don't already know. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably very similar to you. I'm just a very instinctual actor, and you're probably very similar to Christian Bale. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Am. No, <laughs> no. In terms um, of Bale, if you don't know Bale, Bale doesn't have any formal training. He's self-taught. But yeah, I mean, uh, I've been in classes. It's just normally they, they just annoy me. They, a lot of many times. can be annoying. Many can be very self-serving. Obviously, it, they work for people. Obviously, some people need these classes. I'm not a class style of person in any form of my life. Not just acting. I'm just that's not how I I like to learn. You know, I I do acting classes cuz I, you know, repetition, you know, you can always you know, get better. Like, and I'll rewatch something I do and be like, "Yes, oh yeah, um, I'm, I'm clearly doing something I shouldn't be doing there." One of the whatever. best things about a class, and this is something because I have, I, I, I'm starting off with just a one day and a three week, which are the fundamentals. And after you've done that, you apply the fundamentals to scene work. That's it. So my objective is after those four weeks, it's a one day and a three week. Mm -hmm. You go into a three week scene work study where you, as the actor, can choose any monologue or any scene you want to do. And we, you come off book, week one. Yeah. We run it, I give you notes. Second week, we run it and give you notes. And by the third week, it should be staged or set ready because that's what the industry expects of you. Yeah. You need to be ready to present this thing. And, and I don't see a lot of <laughs> acting classes that, that really get you that quickly on your feet and have it yeah. all under your skin. Yeah, exactly. And that's, I, I, he's I always, wanna, he's, he's an amazing actor. He, yeah, one of the goats. Oh. Um, and the people he referenced, obviously, yeah. are all the... You could tell some you, of them you are know, our dose that yeah, we're so exactly. honored to. I would love to have Nasir as a dose. Oh my goodness! Uh, he would, but he, I've been told he doesn't like doing a lot of interviews, no, especially video. He does not I like think, doing video interviews. I think, um, I think if he was, I think if he was told and guaranteed that our only objective is to talk craft, maybe nothing but the art form, and to talk about theater process. Um, which schools of of training he's been exposed to because i promise there's some things he's been exposed to we're predominantly exposed in acting process to all western teachings mm -hmm. we're it's stanislavski it's I mean, I, he's russian but that's the western modality for acting systems come from stanislavski and then mm -hmm. strasberg and adler and Udahagen and meisner and there's a list of contemporaries now but there are a lot of contributors to the art form in india who have a completely different approach to the craft mm -hmm. and for me as much as i know there's universal principles i tell my class that i i view my thing as 
my approach is basically kind of like the Constitution. I have principles that I think work, but it's open to amendments. It's a living document, and I don't claim to know it all. You have objections. Tell me. You may teach me something, and I'll go, you know what? That's better. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, if there were movies that he referenced in there that we definitely should be watching, please let me know what, they, me know are. what they are. I'd love to watch, obviously, everything he's ever done because he's such a great actor. Beautiful. Um, please let us know down below.